I'm with Dave Kerry from Jerusalem. Now, Dave, you're a musician. Were you born in Jerusalem? Yes, I was born in Jerusalem, raised and born there mm. in the old city of Jerusalem. And now you're a rapper. Do you write your own music? And does a city like Jerusalem inspire you? Yes, I do write my own music. Uh, I also work with other producers. And yes, the intensity of the streets of the old city, yes, inspire me a lot. And this is, I think, it, where it all came from, from the intensity of what's happening in Jerusalem and the old city. And it's the diversity of cultures, of people, of everything. What got you into rap music in the first place? You know, I was into music since a very, very young age. Like, I think I started learning music when I was five years old, seven years old. Mm. And in the age of, I guess, 11, 10, I, I just like to hear new music. And I was at school, we started to hear some rap music because it was the cool thing back mm. in the days. <laughs> it was the, the new thing of the world. And I got into it. I loved it. I connected to it, talking freely about whatever you want uh, the rhythm, the beats, the lyrics, the, the wordplay, everything just touched me and I connected to it. Mm. So I grabbed the pen and started writing, rapping. Mm. Uh, can rap music influence a generation? Very nice question. <laughs> yes, rap music can influence a generation. I think we, we can see it in the past, in the maybe if you want to say late, 80s 90s when it comes to american rap music mm. i can i think i can see it in the black community when tupac and biggie uh, started all their music and here i can see that the new generation is very influenced by rap music and uh, by the by the new school of rap music and if you go now around people are connected to it and the new generation is very in touch with it and you can hear it in social media, you can see it in social media, you can hear it when you walk around in the streets. The new generation is listening and rappers are conveying messages to the new generation, whether it's love, it's politics, it's personal issues, anything. I think it's touching the new generation. Is there a big Arab rap scene? A big Arab rap scene you mean in the Arab world? Yeah. Yes, there is a very big... Actually, it's getting very, very big. I think rap music in the Arab world is finally seeing the light in the last few years. It is very big. If we're talking about here, we, we can hear a lot of names coming out from Palestine. We can hear a lot of names coming out of Egypt, of Saudi Arabia, what else, Jordan. And it is getting big. And I think, yeah, as I said, it's starting to see the light. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, which artists inspired you? Which artists inspired me? Well, rock music was played a very big aspect in my life. I always loved rap and loved rock music. If you want to say names, it's, it's mostly the people who I grew up listening to, Eminem and Freddie Mercury. Mm. Uh, now, you're born in Jerusalem, a holy city. You're born into a Christian family. Does religion inspire you to writing music? Yes. To be honest, religion does inspire me to write my music. I, I think... I don't know if you want to call it religion. I think it's more the spiritual relationship between me and the creator mm. and God. And I actually have a song named God. Mm. I, I, I speak to God and I tell him how much I am connected to him. And then I tell him what I see in reality is contradicting everything he taught us. And then I take like I take the listener to a journey where I go downhill and then I realize at the end that God has God's wisdom has to do something with it. So we we reach to a point where where okay, now I understand why all of this happened. Mm -hmm. And then I go back to God. When did you record your first album? Ah my first album was recorded in Bet Sahur, Bethlehem Bet Sahur, mm. at uh, RJ Music Production, produced by uh, John Handal. But after the album, uh, by the way, I was on and off for a few years because of some health and personal issues. And I got really back to the scene 2018 with full power. Mm. And I'm working very hard since then. I think that album, when I look at it, I look at it as it is in the past. So now, since 2018, a new Dave has come out and like 
I, I started the new me since 2018, and I think I leveled up. I'm seeing the life in a different point of view, and it's, it's connecting and influencing my music in a different way. So, yeah. And did you sign to anybody at all? Yes. In the beginning of the year, I signed to Universal Music, Universal Music Mina. That's this year, yeah, in the beginning of the year. Mina, Universal Music Mina, which is Middle East and uh, North Africa. They're based in Dubai, and they have also offices all around the world. I think everyone knows them. Yeah, I dropped two singles with them, and that's it. Must have been exciting just signing with a production team. Yes, uh, signing. Yes, yes, yes. It, it was a very big thing for me, yeah. yeah. And do you perform by yourself, or do you perform with the band? So it depends how much the festival organizers pay. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they're willing to pay for the band, then yes, I bring a band with me. If uh, depends on the budget, depends on the vibe, depends on the mood of the festival. Is it a party? Is it a big festival? What the organizers are looking for, and we act accordingly. Sometimes I do bring the band. Mm. Sometimes it's only me and my DJ. Which would you rather sing with, just by yourself or with a band? You know, man, it's it's a different feeling when you have a band. It's, it's and even the way I act, I think, on stage and I rap, it's different when it's with a band than it's a DJ. Which do I prefer? I, I prefer both. I prefer both. But to be honest, I'm more connected to live music. But I can do both and I love both. What uh, languages do you rap in? I rap in Arabic. Only Arabic. Sometimes when I get crazy on stage, I have like one or two or three songs in English that I just drop only live depending on the mood of the festival or the party. Sometimes I do a few in English, yeah. Mm. So you've been doing many different festivals over the years. How has it been for this year with COVID-19? So, yeah, not as a surprise, just like everyone else, everything was cancelled starting from the beginning of the year. Unfortunately, we had to cancel all the shows that were supposed to be until mid-year, which is until May or June. Not talking about summer and uh, going forward, yeah. Because, man, you know... When we said, like I said this year, I'm going to festivals and I, I was so excited at the beginning of the year and all of a sudden everything got like closed and everything changed. Yeah, changed and got cancelled and yeah, I had to cancel like a lot of shows. At the beginning of the year, like, you know, there's the marathon that happens in Palestine and some organization asked me to go to some village here and to take some people from a school in, that's located in that village to do a small rap workshop and just to record a song together and open the marathon with it. And I was so excited for it and I was excited and the, the kids gave me a great energy and we were just starting and then I get a phone call. I remember I got the phone call from the school like at 11 p.m. Do not come tomorrow. It is closed and it is dangerous. Yeah. And then that time I knew that, yeah, everything was going down. But, you know, we always say, think positively. So greater things to come. Yeah. yeah, the negative side is you've lost a lot of these opportunities, performance. But has it given you an opportunity to write more? Maybe you just write about the experiences that you've faced over this last year? So, yeah, actually this year I, I've done a lot of things to build the better version of myself. So I knew that there will not be shows. I knew that, that music might be a little bit less. I always write. It doesn't matter if it's lockdown or not. I am uh, The studio I go like when I feel like going and start dropping things. But I decided this year just to, okay, I, I have to build the better version of myself. So I did a challenge. I called it Dave's Challenge. And I shared it with my followers on Instagram. I lost 20 kilos. But I more did it, you know, not for the body and the physical part of it. I did it more for my mind and my soul and, and really to see things differently in this world and to just get out of the dark place that I was in, I think. And I'm very proud of myself, and I think I succeeded to do this this year. And I will never be perfect, but I think this year affected me uh, positively when it comes to, to self-development. Mm. What challenges have you had to face in building a music career? Well, uh, challenges. I think mostly, mostly what every artist who lives here I think it's we all share the same things like you have to build yourself now thanks for social media that you, you do not really need like now a record label or someone like to fund you to do something yes you still need to go to pay for the studio and the producer recording time and so on but I think social media now is just the place to just drop your music it's, um, I'm not gonna mention like funding and money now because you know 
you work, you do your thing, and then you, you, just, you just go for it. Other challenges I faced, I had some uh, health issues 2013, 14. It affected me very badly. I was unable to go on stage and to the studio and record things. So I was on and off, on and off. And I, was, I had that conflict and that war in my head, like what happens if I go on stage and I... For example, I get a panic attack, and what happens if I'm in the studio and all of a sudden my nerves and the stomach will start hitting me? And I was like living this conflict until I I was uh, powerful enough to overcome it. Mm. And uh, yeah. Have uh, family and friends been supportive? Well, de- depending how, how how what do you mean by supportive? Yeah, if you mean like supportive, yeah, they say nice words. They say nice words when I want them. They help me. Sometimes I, I drive them crazy, but they're my friends, so they have to do it. <laughs> yeah, more or less, yes. But I think at the, at the end of the day, you know, it's you. It's your dream. It's your goal. It's, it's your work. It's what you want. So, so you have to do it by yourself. Mm. Uh, you also produce music videos as well. What's it like producing a music video? I love acting. Uh, I've studied, I had some courses, some drama courses in theater when I was young. I used to play in some plays, theatres. Uh, I also directed one time a, a play. And then also since a young age, I think acting came along with music. So I loved acting. And now I'm, yeah, I'm producing. I think all the music videos that I did, I produced them myself. And, and they were not funded by anyone. So I had to do everything from A to Z. Each video clip, you're gaining more experience and you learn from people because I'm not specialists so I always bring some specialists and like they they are very helpful and they give me their experiences and I learn from them and I just like the artistic part of it you know I like to go crazy as much as I can in my music videos it's it's a challenge sometimes to have a music video because to have a music video you need a very 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 big fund but yeah you can do it who would you most like to sing with today Ah, very nice question. From the Arab world? Anybody. I think I would like to, to try to sing. There is an Egyptian rapper, singer, performer uh, per, who, who, was, who was attacked, I think, because of the way he's, he's doing his style on stage. Like, he, he's, he's a little bit crazy. He's called Muhammad Ramadan. Mm. I don't know. I think people know him. He, he's just crazy the way he jumps, the way he dresses, the way he goes on stage, and the way he sings. He, he's just himself and I think and yeah I think I would like to try that mm. now you've got a new song that's been released tell us a bit about that yeah so I'm releasing a, a new song on the 29th of October the song is called Sammy Sammy in Arabic means to rise above or to transcend mm. so this song is talking about the phase that is after the breakdown after you hit rock bottom, after you're just down there in the black hole. So it talks about the stage after this phase. Mm. And it says that, you know, because in life you sometimes face people that are, you know, that are hypocrites, narcissists, anything negative, and things that really frustrate you and put you down, and experiences and... Life happens and you just go to that black hole that, that you can never get out from. But then if, if you look really inside, you can build that light and just, just transcend and rise above everything you've been through. And this is why I called it Sammy, because I rose above, because I transcended from that place. And I just look, I, I look at that time, you know, and I embrace it. I really embrace it and I thank it because that time made me who I am today. So this song is about this. It's dropping with a video clip as well. The video clip also, I think it is very interesting, very artistic. Uh, it's just some phases through life that you go to and we show you in the video clip how it's all in your head and you can really overcome it. It's all in your head. So yeah, and it was produced by Samer Sifri and uh, lyrically, of course, written by me and also video clip, the script was written by me. And the director is Subhi Dajani, very creative, talented director from Jerusalem. Can music make a difference here in a troubled part of the world? You know, man, yeah, I think it, like, 
You know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's not if it makes change or if, it's, if it influences something. Or I, I think if music touches you, even if an artist touches only one person, I think, and he makes him feel something, I think that's enough of music, you know. And yeah, I think music is a great therapy to the world and to human mm. being in, in general. So I, I think, yeah. Mm. What's your prayer for the future? My prayer for yeah. the future, my prayer for the future is uh, to keep that strength inside of me, to keep moving forward towards my goals. And, and you know, that's personal, I think. But I would like to see a community that's accepting more music and accepting each other and, and just living in peace together. I think, yeah. Okay, Dave, thank you much. Yeah, always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure.